let's talk about romance after the oh, romance. convent oh. <laughs> after the convent after the comes Jotusa. Jotusa. may i tell that story sure we're smiling and laughing because of the way my introduction to Joe Tusa started on my birthday. I turned 40 years old. And um, my girlfriend, who set it up, um, invited everyone I knew except one person, Joe Tusa. She invited him to the birthday party um, that was celebrated at the Swilly um, office, that beautiful two-story building on Heights Boulevard. And um, I was to make the cake, get the dessert, and oversee the food. And um, then she had everyone there that I knew except Joe. And I met him that night. I mean, I met him that day. And at the end of the day, when everyone had gone, he asked me for a date. And from there on, we became great friends and had to... Uh, we dated by going to football, basketball, any of the sports events that he had to be at, which was okay. I was with him. It didn't matter. So it was an unusual um, period of dating. But we uh, later married on March the 4th, right here at St. Teresa's, with uh, Bishop Fiorenza. And it was... Uh, it was great. Uh, this was the start of thing. Like, was it was it fifty? Fifty years of marriage? No, we've we've been married about forty two years. Yeah, that's a that's a great great kid. It's under it. He would tell you it's over fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he was with you in retirement and maybe even before that he was with you at, at mass every morning and kind of yes. began his day that way. He did. That had to have had some impact on his ability to be peaceable and to bring peace at a time of great uh, hostility and hatred. Yes, it, it was. And because of his calm exterior, you know, he, Relayed that to administrators and umpires and all the, all the things that would affect the influence of students in those games everywhere. Yeah. Now, I remember we, we talked before, and your own vision of what it meant to be a teacher, you talked about just now giving a gift. Um, mm -hmm. You've also talked about you know, setting an example. So, yes. like, what... What was that like for you as you approached teaching from this space of prayer and from knowing Christ? Like, how, how does teaching start to take shape for a person of faith? Well, to me, um, it's starting from the outside. Well, no, starting, I would say starting from the inside and reflecting it through your outside the way you dress, the way you act, your movements, your, um, your calmness, it, in a reverent way. And I think that is what reflects your, your inner core of being, um, you know, a Catholic. That you're, uh, you're peaceful. You're, um, that's all I can think of at the moment. <laughs> Very good. Well, I mean, we've talked a little bit about you know, some of the things that you've done at, at St. Teresa through the years, um, some of the things that, that you and Mr. Tusa have been able to do in the broader uh, community. We've talked about some of the ways in which you have of fostered an interior life that enables you to go out and to do these things. Uh, yes. But let's, let's go, let's get really concrete about that. That last part of spiritual practices and, and what, what do you do? Like, how, how do you foster this relationship with God that's uh, brought you through so gracefully 40 some years at this parish? Um, 
a great number of years of life. I mean, how, how have you done that? And what, so who taught you? What do you do? Um, I, as what's someone who, who, yeah, no, I mean, what, what's your secret is right because I have God willing many more years to live and I hope to live them as, as gracefully as you do. And, and as a, as a, as a witness to Christ, I've got to, I've got to work on my interior life as well. So have at it. All right. Well, I think the one thing we had in common was the, uh, saying the rosary. We said the rosary every day, whether it was I was peeling the potatoes in the kitchen to get the, the dinner going, or I was late doing this. We made it a point to say the rosary orally every day. And we had that practice in both of our lives before we married because of our training in Catholic schools. Because I remember as a little kid, um, I have to say the rosary, okay. So I would just lay on the bed and I would get through my first or second or third Hail Mary and, and count that. It was sort of a, a childish um, rosary, but I was saying it. And now, now I reverently think about every, um, every phase of the crucifixion or every phase of the uh, scourging of the pillar. And uh, I enjoy the joyful mysteries. I just love the nativity, and that's my favorite one. So I've, I've learned to just take that rosary, and every day that I do say it, I, it just helps me totally. Yeah, that's a beautiful image of the nativity because you have this, you have Christ within you, mm -hmm. and you're kind of bearing him to the world. That, that rosary both like helps you to connect with Christ and gives you that impetus to go out and do the things you've been talking about. That's, that's great. It does. Um, so five o'clock every day, huh? Yes. I was, since Joe's death, I've made it a point that they, that Joe has four children that are, well, he had four children. One is dead. So the other three know that I will be sitting in the rocking chair at five o'clock saying the rosary for them. And that seems to give them a little bit of, um, I've noticed that they just feel peaceful about having someone praying for them. And that made me realize that I should do that for more people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, your, that's the nature of the, the sacrifice, the gift that you've been talking about. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now, this whole idea of kind of making time in your day to offer something for God and other people started, must have started pretty early on if you do it so regularly now. Well, Joe, we would like, uh, well, if you, we didn't always go to church. We didn't have the opportunity. We were running a cattle ranch up in Leona for about 20 years. But um, when we were in town, we would. But uh, we were taking care of cattle. <laughs> so, I mean, cattle sort of take care of themselves. It's not like we're branding uh, all the time. But uh, it, it was a nice outdoor uh, experience. And I knew that he needed this outlet in the kind of work he was doing because he was hiring and firing so many uh, personnel. And that was always the, the problem, the personnel and people's uh, livelihoods. So um, so to be able to get away then. Yes. And that, to do something with your hand. Yes. Yeah. Um, and run a tractor. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know we're jumping all over the place, but, but back to Holy Name and the, and the sisters. Um, so is this something, this, this idea of giving a gift to God and to others, this idea of um, offering sacrifice for others' benefit, um, was that something that began um, at there? Uh, no, that began 
in my childhood under the Inquiry Word Sisters. And it, it was, uh, I think, um, it began when, as a small child, you, you would do something as a gift for your mother or your father. You would accumulate uh, a spiritual bouquet. You would, uh, on a sheet of paper or on a card that you would make, you would say, Mother, uh, Happy Mother's Day, um, rosaries, 15 rosaries, and your um, visits, holy nameless position right by the church. So it was easy to go at recess time and just pop into the church, go and say hello to St. Anthony, and go to Francis Cabrini, go to Mary. It was, it was a childlike um, feeling, but it was so sincere and pure, and it was, it was encouraged because um, we were right there. We, we weren't fighting out in, in the parking out on the lot. It, it was uh, we played games, but uh, most of the time, I would choose to run over to the church. Okay. So, what as you look back on your your life of faith, um, what has God done for you? Oh, everything! Everything. I mean. I see so many little things in my life. I just marvel and say thank you. Uh, I walked out the door yesterday. I looked over in the flower bed. I thought, oh, I wonder if Joe has a rose blooming for me. Sure enough. Everyone's, well, a bush will only have so many roses every day. But he really um, made sure that he planted me roses. and. Uh, I look for any of the roses that he's planted. God has put different little things in my life that um, has made me a better person. Now, let me think, think of one particular item. Um, for even in Joe's death, even though I miss him dearly, I have become much closer to each of his three children that are living. And it's made me more conscious of um, being uh, a good mother to them through him. Uh, that's about the best example I can give you of what he's done. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, rather than being a person isolated by this terrible event, the loss of your husband of 42 years. Um, I know you've certainly felt that, but. Yes, it's still there. But if you, you can't sit around crying about it, it doesn't do anything and, and it doesn't really honor them. And the fact that um, they had a very difficult um, or a lengthy uh, passing, uh, you're almost glad to see that they're out of pain. So that's a comfort. Lord gives and he takes away. I mean, it's yes. not always understandable to us. It's always really painful, but I don't think it's a reason to, to go away. Right. I think that in these times, it's it probably universally acknowledged. Now is the time to come down. Yes. I agree. So as long as I can drive a car, I'm allowed to drive a car, uh, then I will come to Mass every day that we have Mass. Yes, if I'm still living by the parish, I'd be glad to take you. Uh, it's, I'm, not a, I'm not a morning person, but uh, you don't live very far. So, no, I don't. Um, yeah, it would, be, it would be my privilege. So, oh, go ahead. Well, that's, that's the one thing I can do is... Uh, give up some sleep and, and make an effort to be here for that uh, 7 o'clock Mass. Yeah, and, and uh, St. Teresa, no less. Yes. Because that's, that's St. Therese, Therese's of Lisieux's little way, right? Yes, it is. But can she, you explain for the uninitiated? <laughs> well, she's totally in my life. She's very special. Her picture is around the house. Uh, 
Joe's daughter is named for her, Therese, T-H-E-R-E-S-E. And um, it's, uh, I enjoy her, and I've, uh, I've made a lot of bulletin boards over the years that uh, really highlight her, so, and even her parents and her sisters. That's we and seems that we spouses. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, we didn't get to talk about the council, but that, that's the post conciliar church right there is uh, St. Louis and St. Louis spouses. Yes. We, they made each other saints. We were, um, we were able to go on the Marian tour with Father Phil when he and a lot of parishioners took that tour and we saw the, the, um, the tomb of Zelie and Louis in France. Were you moved by that? Oh, yes. I mean, it just, and to walk through the garden that St. Teresa uh, was in with her father. She would just hold his hand and walk around as a, a little spoiled baby. <laughs> she was spoiled, but she was so, uh, so generous. I mean, she's got, She's, got, she's like a coin that flips. Uh, first a spoiled brat and then a, a just a generous person who's trying to save all the souls. And, uh, yeah, and I know some people watching this might say, you know, it, it's might say it's weird for me to count, let's say, the number of rosaries, the number of short phrases that I say, or whatever it might be. Um, but it sounds like you're explaining the little way as, well, yes, I mean, it's, it's a way of thinking about what have I done today um, and what have I been able to offer to God today and for other people today. Um, and yes, I kind of have some idea of what that is. But at the end of the day, it seems to be about this, this generous spirit. Yes, it is. Why should people give to St. Teresa? Why should they give to her? Well... Give to St. Teresa Parish in Memorial Park. I think that everyone should give in their own way. If it's money, if they have a lot of it, it that's the best investment they could have. Uh, if they're... Um, touched by her devotion to others, uh, they should be active in some way. So, um, during this, this pandemic, it's good that we're together. Uh, it's good that you could come. So, uh, many blessings to you, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, or comment below.